God bless. Amen. What a wonderful day to have you with us here in the studio for another episode of Kingdom Concepts. If you haven't already, please like and share, amen, these episodes, amen, with others. Uh, we encourage you, amen, to check out uh, our other avenues of social media. You can go on to YouTube and ring the bell. Uh, we want to make sure that you're aware of everything that we're doing because our desire is to see you be made strong in the Lord. We want your passion just to invade your family. We want it to invade your leadership. And our prayer is that the time that we spend with you is going to cause you to rise up, amen, and experience a relationship with God that is greater than anything mm -hmm. that you've ever known. That's a beautiful day to be serving the Lord. It is. You know, we, we're we we're learning new avenues. We're learning new avenues where we're not limited. We're not allowing that's right. the things no that's happening. We're not allowing the things that's happening uh, around us to limit the effective way that we can reach people and we could spread the gospel. You know, the enemy would try to uh, stifle us and he would try to uh, cause us to feel like we're not doing enough or, or being fruitful in this time right now. But... I don't know about you, but I feel like we we're, we're being very fruitful and doing what God's called us to do. We're not saying, okay, well, um, you know, we can't do this or we can't do that, so we're not going to do anything. I know a lot of ministries, honestly, that that have uh, they're not able to have church inside church, and so they're just not doing anything. Um, I, I don't know how. How do you feel about not doing anything? About you know what? There, there is no way. I no way. There's no way that I could go without serving God's people because. You know, today we're going to be talking about passion for mm. God's people. And, and that's the oh. thing is that when you have a passion for God, you know, the closer you get to God, the more other centered oh, yes. your life becomes. And, um, you know, I, I, I can't pull back. Mm -hmm. I, I have to give everything he's given me away. I mm -hmm. want people to know what, what he's taught me that's and right. what I've learned about him because, man, I know what life was without God. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, you know, everybody on this earth knows what life is without God. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. once, man, you've received him, you know that you have something in someone that nobody else has ever felt and mm -hmm. ever known. And so that's why it's so important for us to to do our very best to make Jesus famous right. in and through our lives. That's you know, right. it's so vital. Amen. Because God is a God of passion that's right. and God's passion is for people. That's right. You know, one of the most important scriptures, you know, and one of the most well-known scriptures that most of us know, and even as a sinner, I can quote it, mm -hmm. and that is John 3, 16. And so I, I want us to start right there today. I want you in your Bibles to turn to John chapter 3. We're going to read verse 16 and verse 17. A lot of people forget verse 17, but it's so important because it really shows the passion of our Christ, and it shows the, the heart that he has in his purpose for coming, what passion caused him to do for us. So Amen. will you read that? Sure. Um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, I'm a whosoever, say you're a whosoever, believeth in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's verse 16. Verse 17 says this, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. 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 That's Amen. why Jesus came was to, to, to save us. And we know how passionate he was for us because we've seen that passion displayed on the cross to where mm -hmm. the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, while, while I was at my worst, Christ died for me. He died for you. Mm -hmm. It's like he, you know, he, he gave it all. Mm -hmm. He held back nothing. That's Let right. me tell you something. Heaven, God bankrupted heaven when he sent Jesus Christ to be the sacrifice for our That's sins. Right. And he did it because man's sin had separated him from God. The creator was separated from his creation. And God never wanted us to be without him. Mm -hmm. He never wanted to be without us. And, and I think that when you, when you understand how passionate that God is for people, then you're going to start seeing a love inside of your heart growing for others mm -hmm. not just lovely people but god will cause you to have a love for even the unlovely mm -hmm. because you think about christ could have went right back to heaven but he chose to go to hell to defeat the devil instead of going back to heaven without you and me mm -hmm. amen that's how much he loved you he was willing to go to hell before going back to heaven amen 
He wanted to make sure that there was a door open through Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me, he said. Amen. He wanted to make sure that every person has an opportunity to walk through the doors of salvation, to receive forgiveness, so that that way they can come back into that right relationship with the Father. Well, there was a separation, you know. Yes, yeah, there was. Separates. There was a separation. There was a sin. There wasn't. Uh, there wasn't a place for us to be as close to Him as as we are able to now. And, you know, I have grandchildren, and I know how much I miss them when I don't get to see them, when I don't get to be around them. I can go if I go a week and I'm not around them, and I'm hugging them. I get to see them at church, but I just need to see them, mm -hmm. and I need to to hug them, and I need to be next to them. I miss them when they're not here. And and God, he was like, I'm done. I I, I, I miss them too much. I want that closeness. <laughs> yeah. So so the, the passion that he had for us to send his son to die on the cross for us. God, God man, just, that's just amazing that how much passion he had for us, that he did all of that for us so that we can be close to him. And he's not asking us to die for him. He's just asking us to live for him. Yes, that's and so, it. And so for us... Living for him and having a passion for his people like he has for us, mm -hmm. that's not a lot to ask. That's not a lot to ask of us, us, of us, you know, to just say, you know what, you should have a p passion for God's people like he has a passion for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's not, it's not requiring our life, it's just requiring our, our livelihood, our time, our, our presence to be around God's people. And, and, it enriches us to be around others that love yeah. him as much. Well, that, you know, and I think that it, it causes you to get away from yourself because let's face it, you know what? When you weren't saved, uh, you were your best subject. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always me, myself, and I, how, mm -hmm. to, how I feel, what I think, what I see, you know, and, and, and we're very selfish. That was original sin was being selfish. Mm -hmm. And you have to deal with that. When you come to God, you can't, it, for, for a person that's born again to say, I just love God, but you don't have a heart to help people, mm. then your love for God isn't as deep as you think it is. Because when you love somebody, you're going to do everything you can to do things that cause that person to, right. to be happy. And God loves it. The Bible says that all of heaven rejoices when one sinner mm -hmm. comes home, comes back. Yeah. Now, if it, if it makes God that happy... You know, then I want to make him happy. Okay. I want to be a source of that by doing everything that I can, amen, to 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 seek God, to put that passion that's inside of him for people, to put that passion inside of me. I want to have a passion for people. And let me say this to those of you that are that are tuning into this broadcast. There are only two things that you can take to heaven with you. Mm, when you leave this earth, mm. whether it's by death or whether it's by the rapture, there are only two things that you can leave this earth with. That is the word of God and souls. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're filling up on the word of God and you're reaching as many souls as possible. You know, one of the things that's been different for me in this season, you know, for those of you that attend, you know, uh, one of our churches, you know, West Coast uh, Believer Center, Many of you understand that your pastor is an apostle. That is my mantle. That's the office that I walk in. So I'm sent one. God sends me to nations. I've been called to the nations of the world. We both have to help build up leaders and to help raise up, you know, the, the local church and to make folks strong. But when this pandemic broke out, man, I knew I need to be home. We were on the mission field. We went to the mission field even at the beginning of this. Amen. To reach people because people matter to God. God sent us to the UK when Europe was shutting its borders down. We went in, we ministered to God's people, and then God brought us home. And here we've been ministering to not only our communities, but we've also been ministering to many of you that are tuning in from around the world. And so for me, it's like, God, I want to be immediately. That was mm -hmm. our first response mm -hmm. was, what can we do to reach more people right now? Mm -hmm. And we are tapping out every avenue right. that is available to be able to do this. And, and it's because we have a passion for people. Amen. 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 And, you know, right before, and I, I wanted to, to just, uh, if you could just share a little bit, maybe somebody's watching and they don't know what our shirts are about. And it says, ask me what this shirt's about. So if you could just share a little bit about what we're doing in our community to reach more people. Well, one of the things that we started right before, uh, you know, this change that took place yes. in the world was, you know, we always are looking for an opportunity to create one. 
sometimes, not just seeking an opportunity, but to create one, not only for us, but also for the people that we uh, that we disciple, the people that we pastor. And so, you know, our uh, uh, creative uh, elements team came up with this concept because they said, everybody, have you ever been to a store and you see somebody wearing a shirt and you're just kind of eyeballing it, trying to figure out what is this shirt mm-hmm. about? Mm-hmm. And uh, But, you know, people will rarely ask. You'll rarely go, hey, man, what does that mean? But when you have a, a something like this on the front of a shirt, it's inviting you to say, hey, what is, what's this about? What's your shirt about? And so we did that on purpose. It was intentional so that wherever you're at, whether you're at the grocery store, the bank, you're out, you know, the soccer game, that people can approach you about this shirt and you can respond in so many different ways. Depending you know, on your personality. Depending on your personality, depending on, you know, the environment, you know. Uh, like when you're in the grocery store, if somebody asks you and you're in line, you're not going to be able to sit there and, you know, give them, you know, this big old uh, gospel story. Unless it, it's you. Yeah. And Unless it, it, it's you. Because <laughs> you won't care. You won't care how long it takes. But, but we did this because we have some people that are, we know, are kind of shy. They're not, yes. you know, they're more introverted than extroverted. Me, I'm very extrovert. Uh, so we created this to where if someone asks them, then they'll just basically just say, Hey, you know, uh, I go to West coast believer center over on the you know corner of Walnut Demery or, you know, over in uh, uh, Porterville. So that way they're able to put a, put a shout out to where they go to church. Uh, if you're in an environment where you have some time, you're able to share your testimony. If you want, Hey, it, this is, uh, you know, this is what my, my, my church came up with this idea. And, you know, we just wanted to share our testimony with you, you know, about what God's done for me. Or to be able to minister the gospel. I mean, we want to lead people to Jesus. Mm-hmm. So this shirt creates an exposure for and an opportunity for us to minister mm-hmm. to people everywhere and anywhere. And then once a month, we've uh, everyone that owns these shirts, you know, we tell them, hey, on the third Saturday of every month, we want you to wear this shirt wherever you're at, whether you're at home, whether you're out in public. So when people in our community in our town of Visalia. You know, when they're out uh, shopping or they're in Porterville going to Home Depot or going down to, you know, the diner, you know, they're going to see these shirts everywhere and they will ask somebody, what is this? And so it's an opportunity for us to release that passion of God for his people. And it gives us an opportunity to lead people to the Lord. So that's what it's about. Because why? Amen. Because of Mark chapter 16. And Mark chapter 16 doesn't stop just because you're shy you still have this commandment just because you're shy just because you're you're you know it's hard for you to talk to people you know this mark 16 is still for you even though you're shy god god knows your personality so Mm -hmm. for us we're like what do we you know because some even a shy person when somebody comes to them to talk to them it's easier for them to to talk and so that's why this, because this commandment, this commission, it's not a choice. It's not an mm-hmm. option. It's a commandment. It's a commission. He said, I want you to do this. And yeah. so read that real and, quick. And, you know, in God, when it, when it comes to the Lord, you need to understand something that, that God's desire is for every one of us to reach the lost. Mm-hmm. And so in Mark 16, verse 15 through 18, this is referred to as the great commission. Some people, it's the great omission. They don't do this. And so (laughs) it's important that you be a part of the Great Commission because there's only one reason why you're born again and you're still on this earth. Mm -hmm. And that is to fulfill the last words of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of the last words before he left. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 through 18. Let's go ahead and let's read this. And he, talking about Jesus, said unto them, his disciples, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel. That means good news. To every creature, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Mm. Man, I like that. Mm -hmm. They shall speak in new tongues. I like that too. Amen. Praying in my most holy faith. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Now, let me say something. That does not mean that, you know, you start dancing around in church with rattlesnakes and stuff. <laughs> the only good snake's a dead snake, in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. Probably going to have some tree huggers getting mad at me, but anyway, you know. But what it means is that, you know, if anything that's evil like that, you know, that you have the power that's over right. it. And this is good news, amen, that you can drink any deadly thing and it won't hurt you. That don't mean you go pressing your luck and start drinking poison. You know what I'm saying? God made cliffs, but he don't want you jumping off of them, you know? So it's important that you understand the context of this. What it means is that when you're out there in the world, there's some places where that water is deadly, um, making you the Tennessee quick step. (laughs) So this right here 
is God letting you know that you can go anywhere at any time, reach out to people, I'll be with you. There's going to be signs, wonders, and miracles that will follow, that confirm that what you are saying, that Jesus is the Christ, is the truth. Come on, the miracles back up what you're preaching. And he says, you'll lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, or like if you if you accidentally eat something that you shouldn't. Yeah, I mean, God takes care. God ain't going to send you somewhere to die. You know what I'm saying? God, I went to Africa when they had an Ebola breakout, and I knew God didn't send me here to get Ebola. Amen. Uh, I had God send me to Russia. I had the Russian mafia one time threaten me. And I knew God, they threatened to break my legs if I came back to minister in that city. Yeah. But I knew God didn't send me to Russia to break my legs. And I came back the next night and told them I was coming back the next night. Amen. And I didn't break my legs. But it's important for you to understand that regardless if you're a shy person, a very mm -hmm. outgoing person, a loud person, quiet person, whatever your makeup is, um, there is a place for you to That's be right. able to reach people. There's That's a place right. for you to have a passion for people. And I'll tell you one of the greatest places, and one of the greatest opportunities that God gives to everybody to help reach people is the local church. Come on. It's serving in the local house of worship wherever you attend. You want to be actively involved in the ministry of the Lord. Now, if you're taking notes, write this down. Christian service has no unemployment. Mm -hmm. God has enough work for everyone. That's the truth. Amen. So it's important for you to be involved because this is what happens is that you might not be a, you might be a shy person, but you can serve somewhere in ministry mm -hmm. that helps somebody get saved during That's that, right. during that service, during that church's activities. You might be back there, you know, serving in children's ministry or serving in hospitality, you know. And people are getting saved because of what, you, what you're right. offering. So together, right. amen, you have a passion and God's using you to take care of things. So it's important, amen, that you, you be actively involved in ministry. Because if you care about people, come on, if you have a passion for people, then you're going to do something to reach mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. They need to know about this great salvation. Isn't it so and true? It's awesome. You know, and God will show you. God will show you how to take the passion you have for him and how to um, use it in your local church or in your community. I know um, one of our, our friends, she's very quiet. She likes to sit in the back. Um, you know, she, she has a ministry that she has out of her home. She has her own business out of her home. And you know what? She wanted to help in children's church, but she didn't feel comfortable being in children's church. So you know what she does? She makes sure that she takes care of every snack, uh, every kind of uh, um, craft. craft, everything that needs to be done for children's churches, yeah. taking care Amazing. of, um, taking care of children's workers show up and everything is done. That's her gift. And she's using it. You know, she has a passion for, for those children, for our church. And so she's using it. So God will show you. It doesn't always have to be out in the open. It doesn't have to be behind the pulpit. It doesn't have to be behind, um, you know, it could be behind the scenes. And as long as you're using the gift God's given you, and for his people, that God will show you that passion yeah. comes up and bubbles up out of you. But we are we also are equal opportunity preachers. So yes. let me say this. You need to be available and okay with God calling on you, though, to mm -hmm. get you outside of your comfort that's right. zone. That's right. Because if there's someone that's lost and they're going to hell and God's telling you, tell them about me, you better get beyond that and, and reach that's them. Right. That's right. Amen. Uh, you, you don't want, you want to know God, you need to know that God can call on you at any time and that you'll move beyond, you'll, you'll go beyond discomfort to see someone get saved, mm -hmm. that you'll go beyond that, amen, to, to, to introduce them to your Jesus. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's so important that we understand that your passion for God is going to create a passion for loving and caring for his people. That's right. You cannot love God and not love people because God is love. And Jesus Christ told us, he said, the, the way that the world people are going to know that you're my disciples mm -hmm. is when they see that you have a love, a passion That's right. That's for one right. another. When they see that you you love people enough to stop and to, and to give them your time, your attention, or, or to bless them, buy a meal, give them some money. Say a prayer. Use your money to travel to go preach to 10 people because the Lord told you to. Yeah. You know, I, I I know for us, we, a lot of our finances, personal finances. We spend tens of thousands of dollars every year go to reach to, the lost. To go to reach the lost because God wants us to do that. Mm -hmm. That's what he's called us to do. And, and so you're... 
your finances go into your passion. They really, really do. Yeah, because your affections follow your money. Yeah, I like. You, you can tell what people are passionate about. Check this out. This is this this will help you. You can tell what people are passionate about by two things. Uh, all, the only thing you need from they don't even have to tell you nothing. Just give me your checkbook and give me your calendar, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you what's important to you. I'll tell you what you're passionate about, because where you spend your time and where you spend your money. It shows where your passion is, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's important for us to have that. And, Amen. And I will say this: that our ministry, our our church has been amazing oh, in showing us I love our church. that they I are love, love passionate ministry. about God and they are passionate about their church. Our church has not suffered any lack mm -hmm. or any kind of setback through this whole thing, and I know it is because our church has a passion. For, um, for for their pastors, for their ministry, for where God has called them to. Yeah. And, you know, maybe you're watching today and you're watching, um, uh, and you, we don't, uh, you know, we're not your pastors. You, you have a church somewhere else or you go to church somewhere else. You know what, your finances, your, um, just your caring about your pastor, sending them a message, sending them a, a email, mm -hmm. just something to, to say, hey, you know what, I might not be seeing you, pastor, but I'm thinking about you. I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, sending me your tithes, your offerings, whatever you're doing to show your your local church that you're still passionate about what they're doing for God. It, it's such an added blessing. So make sure that you're doing that. And um, and I wanted yeah. you know to. I'm sorry. Just side note right there. Just really, just really felt like I needed to say that. But right here, you said your passion for God will create a passion for loving and saving His people. Can you go ahead and read those? Yeah, before you know, because if, if the thing is this is that if you love souls. You mm. will go after them. Amen. You know, if you love them, you're gonna go after them. You're you're gonna you're you're gonna do everything you can to reach people. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's no place that that's too far that you won't go. There's nothing you're not willing to do. There's no sacrifice that you're not willing to make when you care about people, right. when you truly love them, because the love of God has been put inside of you for them. Amen. And this is the thing is that especially when it comes to people in leadership, let me tell you something. If serving people is beneath you, then leadership is beyond you. Oh, say you that have one more no time. No reason say that in, one more in a time. position of leadership if you don't if you don't want to serve people. Um, again, I'll say it again because the wife asked me to. <laughs> if serving people is beneath you, then leadership is beyond mm -hmm. you. Amen. We are called. The Bible says to serve one another. Uh -huh. Amen. It's a back and forth. Amen. And so uh, your leadership will become stronger when it is focused on others and not yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's you helping raise people up and develop people. And I'll say this, that if you're listening to me today and um, you say, well, you know what? Uh, I just I don't think about people. I'm not you know, people aren't on my heart. Let me tell you something. If people are not on your heart, then they are probably on your nerves. <laughs> I heard one guy say this one time. He goes, I love ministry, so I just can't stand God's people. Oh, God. Let me tell you something. You you, you know, you better have a love for people because a, a, a preacher or a leader without love is a butcher. Mm. Amen. Pray and ask God to put a passion inside of you for his Amen. people. I'm telling you, when was the last time you wept for the lost? Mm. When was the last time you offered yourself to, to serve? You know, I'm telling you, when the doors of the church open, you need to be in a position to where you're not going to be a spectator. Let me tell you something. With all of the word and prayer and devotion mm -hmm. that many of you have been just receiving, you need to give it away. In this season, you need to give it away for you to be truly blessed. I'm telling you, give it away. Go back to church on fire and With let people watch on, and come yeah. and see you burn for the passion of God. Amen. Ah, we love you. I pray that you have a deep passion inside of you for the Lord, a passion for his people. And I pray that we get to see you here again. We love you and we pray blessings on Amen. you. Thank you for being with us here on another episode of Kingdom Concept.